The title isn't clickbait. This is hands down one of the scariest pieces of technology that I have seen in my entire life. The technology itself is actually fairly simple. The individual components of what they're doing here is not that impressive. But when you tie them all together, the end-to-end -to -end solution is actually extremely scary. Let's dive into what this is. The technology is called iX-Ray. They're calling them AI glasses that by looking at somebody, you're able to reveal anyone's personal details, like their home address, their name, their phone number, and specific details about their life just from looking at them. The example here is by having a POV, uh, by being able to see somebody's face, this gentleman here, they're able to use these chains of sources, which includes LLMs and a bunch of other things, to reveal the name, age, address, phone number, and personal details about their life. In this video, I wanna talk about what exactly is going on here, what this means for general privacy, how this could affect you in your day-to-day -day life, and how you can actually opt out of all these sources to make yourself a little less susceptible to this attack. An attack is kind of in quotes, it's not necessarily an attack, but it, it is a huge uh, invasion of privacy. Let's kind of go into it. So the, the technologies individually are not that, that sophisticated, right? All they're using is this thing called uh, the Meta Ray-Bans 2, which are a pair of glasses that Meta puts out that has a camera and streaming hardware. They're able to push the stream from the glasses to Instagram, right? So you can stream to Instagram, you can stream to Facebook. And th this in and of itself isn't that bad. Now, obviously there is the question of privacy. When somebody is streaming in public, you see someone's face, and you push it out to the internet, are they allowed to do that? That legality depends on what country you're in. Uh, but in the US, generally, if you're in a public place, you can be streamed legally. So there's like not really a huge issue with that. But what they're able to do is they have a bot that sits in the chat and it watches the Instagram live feed. And they're taking snippets of faces that are registered by AI in the live feed and pumping them off to these two services that I didn't actually know about until today. There's one called PimEyes and one called facecheck.id. What they are are literally facial recognition services that online collect pictures of faces. That's it. They just collect pictures of faces and the associated URL of where those faces live, okay? So what they're doing is they're saying, okay, I see a face here. Let's pump it into PIM eyes and face check ID and return the URLs of where those faces live. We're not getting too crazy. We're not getting, we don't have too much evil going on. Just see a person, look them up on, on what would effectively be Google image search, but for faces faces explicitly. But here's where the AI piece actually comes in, where it gets a little more nefarious because they're able to use the power of an LLM to do automatic facial searching, right? So given the URL that comes back from these facial ID services, they're able to scrape that entire URL to get their name, occupation, and other personal details. Now, obviously the connection here is whether or not a page that contains your face also contains the data that is associated with your personal life, right? So if you have a Facebook profile or a LinkedIn profile that uses your face and also says, I live in this city, I have this career, all that's happening here is they're taking your face, reverse looking it up and having an LLM scrape that. And then from there, from that leaked information, from that revealed information, they're just putting that data into additional lookup databases and using that to basically scour the internet for whatever else stuff they can find. The reason why this is so terrifying and the reason why I'm making a video about this is because this is, I think, probably the worst case scenario when it comes to using leaks to infiltrate somebody's life or to use a trust-based relationship to arbitrarily um, make a person do something they, they wouldn't normally want to do, right? The actual authors of this, uh, of this paper, and I want to bring them up on, on X, and I want to show this video because the video is actually pretty terrifying. In this video, they're going to see a woman and then from the tool, they're able to figure out her first and last name and then use that to immediately develop a relationship with her through trust, right? Because if someone were to approach you on the subway and try to interact with you, the main barrier, at least for me, is like, do they know enough about me to prove that they actually know me, right? Do they know my, my first name, my last name, where I live, where I've worked, right? If they can, if they can name all those things, I generally can associate that person as you know, in, in a person in my inner circle, right? They either know a friend of mine, they know a family member or whatever. So here they're gonna literally break into this woman's life just from using publicly available, and publicly is like in air quotes, right? Publicly available data that they found about her online. Let's watch. Hi, ma'am. Wait, are, are you a Betsy Yes. Oh, okay, I think I, uh, I think I met you through like the Cambridge Community Foundation, right? 
So they looked up her information via the service. They found out her first name and last name that she worked for the Cambridge Community Foundation and then used that to kind of like, oh, oh, we worked at each other. We worked with each other at that place you used to work at. Right. And again, I know I know. This has been done time and time again, literally since like 2012, there have been videos of people where they'll go to a city and they'll pull up someone's you know Facebook profile and use that to like kind of interrogate them and like show like, wow, look at all your information that's publicly available online. But the rate at which this is happening, the, the, the ability for somebody to just get an entire, like effectively a dossier, right? Like on a person, just by looking at them through AI is a terrifying piece of technology. Uh, let's keep watching here. Hey. Yeah, yeah, it's great to meet you. I'm Kane. He does it again, oh, right? So this gentleman here, I pre-watched this, uh, but same thing, just a guy, and he's going to approach him and then use this technology to enter his inner circle. Let's watch. Uh, do you happen to be a person working on like, like minority stuff for like Muslims in India at all or something? Yes. Really? Yes. Are you Kashif? Yes. Oh, I've read your work before. It's super Wait, cool. <laughs> yeah, again, so like not super impressive on its own because like he does put out public work. You could find his face, but the ability to instantly just go scour the internet for this information is truly terrifying. Now, luckily, the positive outlook on this video is you are able to go through all of these sources and remove your data, right? You do have to upload a picture of yourself to the data source to remove yourself, which is actually a little bit ironic, um, but also you need to put up a, uh, a photo ID to prove that you are the person you, you are claiming to want to remove. But once you do that, you can actually pull your information out of all of these databases. So you can make yourself effectively unaffected um, by the iX ray technology. But it does, it does beg a very interesting question where as AI becomes more advanced, as we're able to more rapidly, more rapidly scour the internet for information, how quickly can we develop trust with other human beings in a way that can be used adversarially? And, and think about like, this is them having interactions with other human beings. Individually, these technologies are not anything novel. There's nothing super new about facial recognition, there's nothing super new about being able to look up a person in a public database or even search for their address if they put it online. But the scary part is the ability to, through language learning models, through AI, be able to take a picture of someone's face, scour the internet through all these sources and use that to dock someone with little to no effort is it's, it's dystopian. It's literally like what we have been seeing in movies since the, you know, the fifties, right? About the ability for privacy to go away um, with the increase of technology. So what are the takeaways for this video? Uh, first of all, you know, go pull your data from these resources. Make sure you are not searchable. Also, don't be an idiot, right? Don't, please, God. And if you're an adult that knows, tell your kids that are maybe teenagers, like don't put your address online. Don't put a picture of yourself next to your school, right? Like all of these things uh, are an easy way to, to keep yourself clean online. Now I know leaks happen, leaks like the big SSN dump leak that where I think literally every American had their SSN leaked. Yeah, that's it for now. Anyway, if you like this video, you wanna talk about more of this stuff, go hang out with me on Twitch. I'm on twitch.tv slash lowleveltv and uh, hit that sub button. I really appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one, guys. And before you go, make sure you watch this video about something that I think you'll enjoy just as much. We'll see you over there. Bye.